بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس سوری وی کو ناٹ ڈلیور ڈائریکٹ لیکچرس بیکاز آف دی آن گوئنگ سچویشن دیٹس وائی وی ہیو ٹو گیو لائن لیکچرس ٹو یو ہیئر وی ہیو فیو ٹو سناریوز فار یو فرسٹ سناریو از اے ففٹی ایئرز اولڈ لیڈی ود ہسٹری آف فیور اینڈ کف فار لاسٹ تھری منتھس Her fever has a morning rise and she has a significant weight loss. On examination of the chest, there is decreased air entry on the left lower and middle zones and chest movement along with vocal parameters is also decreased on the same, same side. Percussion note on left middle lower zones is stony dull. What is your diagnosis and uh, how will you manage the patient? Here's another scenario. A 35 years old male who has high grade intermittent fever with rigors and chills. He also gives history of dyspnea and pain on left side of the chest which increases on inspiration. There is history of cough with purulent sputum. On examination there is bronchial breath sounds on, in the uh, left middle zone. Air entry is decreased and percussion note is dull. In this scenario what is your diagnosis and how will you manage it? I am Dr. Muhammad Zishan Aslam from Medical Unit 4 and the topic of our presentation is Pleural Effivia. We will go through introduction, classification, pathogenesis, etiology, the clinical features of Pleural Effivia, the investigation we want to do and the management. The pleural space is bounded on the outer side by parietal pleura and on the inner side which is the visceral side it is bounded by the visceral pleura and the space between the parietal and the visceral pleura actually makes the pleural space. The pleural space plays an important role in respiration by coupling the movement of the chest wall with the lungs. First there is a relative vacuum in the space which keeps the visceral and the parietal pleura in close proximity. And secondly, the small volume of pleural fluid, which has been calculated around, it's around 0.3 ml per kg. Uh, it's not 0.13, it's around 0.2 to 3 ml per kg of the body weight under normal circumstances. This lubricant actually facilitates the movement of the pleural surface against each other without any friction and uh, without any rub. Pleural fluid is defined as abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pleural space. The pleural space contains 0.3 ml per kg uh, of pleural fluid, which I already told, uh, and its production uh, is actually 0.01 ml per hour per kg production. The interplay between the lymph, the capillary leak and the reuptake of the lymphatic vessels leave, leaves around 5 to 15 ml of pleural fluid in a normal person. If the amount of fluid increases than that, then that is called pleural effusion. Then there are types of pleural effusion. Uh, we will also go through them in detail, but uh, there, there is one there is para pneumonic effusion. Pleural effusion which is associated with bacterial pneumonia or pneumonia bronchitis or lung abscesses is called para pneumonic effusion. And then there is loculated effusion where the anatomically confined area is filled with effusion and <clears throat> that is that causes a, a, a area of fluid within the lung cavity. And then there is sub pulmonic effusion which is a combination of fluid between the lung and the diaphragm which actually gives us a false impression of an elevated hemidiaphragm. We will have some pictures of that and then we will elaborate it.
Then comes the composition of the pleural fluid. It is clear. Uh, the volume is around 0.3 ml per kg, as already mentioned. Uh, cells are around 1,000 to 5,000. Majority are mesothelial cells, around 60% and 30% are monocytes, and then 55% are lymphocytes and polymorph nucleosides. Protein is between 1 to 2 gram per deciliter. LDH is less than 50% of the plasma level, and this is very important. LDH will also this uh, all uh, remember this level that LDH in the pleural fluid is actually less than 50 percent of the ldh in the plasma uh, this will uh, this is also used in the lights criteria we will actually go through that in coming slides the glucose is also important it's usually approximately equal to the levels we have in plasma and the ph is uh, a bit higher than what we have in uh, our blood so the uh, pleural fluid is more alkaline as compared to uh, our blood Classification can uh, can be as simple as unilateral or bilateral pleuropene, or we can base it on the uh, side where the fluid is present, such as apical area, interlobar area, subpulmonic, or mediastinal areas. And based on the mechanism uh, of the formation of the pleural fluid or the type of the pleural fluid, which can be transudative or exudative. So transudative, transudative usually they, this is because of there is uh, an increased hydrostatic pressure or a decreased oncotic pressure. We will look into it in uh, coming slides. Hydrostatic pressure when the, this is increased the pressure in the efferent arterioles that goes on that increases that will lead to a backflow and capillary leak. That capillary leak will cause more production of the pleural fluid than it can be taken out by the lymphatics and thus the production of the pleural effluvia. The oncotic pressure on the other hand is decreased, uh, uh, oncotic pressure decreases when the protein concentration, the protein which is, which is, uh, which is helpful to keep the um, fluid within the vessel, that is that the protein, uh, if content is decreased, that will lead to a leakage of the fluid out of the capillaries. Then there is exudative um, pleural fluid, which is when there is alteration in the pleural permeability because of infection, trauma, or other causes. We will see. Then we can also classify them according to the type of fluid which comes out. That is biogenic, uh, if it contains pus, chylothorax, if it is contaminated by chyle, uh, increased triglyceride and chylomicron levels. And if there is blood, which is hemothorax, pseudopilus, you know, associated with rheumatoid arthritis, hydro containing water, and urinothorax when it is contaminated by urine. We will go through all of them. Uh, so, transudative effusion, there is alteration, as already I have told you, there is alteration of the hydrostatic and oncotic factors that increase the formation or decrease the absorption of the pleural fluid. So increased mean capillary pressure, such as heart conditions in which that occurs is heart failure, or decreased oncotic pressure, such as cirrhosis or pinephrotic syndrome, when you actually in cirrhosis, you have decreased production of uh, proteins, and in nephrotic syndrome, you have increased loss of protein uh, in the urine. So exudative pleural effusion is damage or disruption of the normal pleura when the normal pleural membrane or vasculature is damaged or disrupted. So that can be because of the tumor involvement of the pleural space, that can be because of the infections, inflammatory conditions, trauma, which leads to increased capillary permeability, or it can decreased, uh, it can lead to decreased lymphatic drainage. This uh, diagram actually shows a lot of things. If the hydrostatic pressure collide osmotic pressure and the, uh, because of the proteins actually make a balance between each other then there is a fixed amount of fluid that is being produced per hour which is uh, around 0 0.01 ml per kg per hour that is being produced however if the hydrostatic pressure goes up the pressure in the efferent arterioles increase they cause a backflow of water this leads to fluid leaking out from the capillaries. Okay, so this is one cause of transudative pleural fluid. The other cause is if the, if this does not happen, but there is decreased collide osmotic pressure, 
so decreased protein synthesis because of liver disease or increased protein loss through the kidneys or whatever the reason is if there is decreased proteins in the capillary in the arteriose and capillaries which can which cannot bind the fluid within which cannot keep the fluid within the capillary so the fluid will again leak keep in mind that hydros increased hydrostatic pressure can lead to transudative pleural effusion decreased osmotic pressure can lead to formation of transudative pleural effusion and both can collectively or they can have a combined effect they can present uh, at the same time and they can lead to transudative pleural effusion now from the exudative pleural effusion here you can see the capillary walls become leaky so not only the fluid but the proteins which were like these were the proteins they were also they are leaking out of the capillaries so there is fluid and protein leakage this is because of vasodilation and stasis this is because of inflammation and increased endothelial spacing leading to leakage of protein along with fluid that's why that's exudative so the increased vascular permeability not only allows the fluid in the proteins to leak but it also causes the inflammatory cells within the blood vessels to leak and leak into the pleural space when the inflammatory cells are there the inflammation is there the bacteria are there the number of cytokines such as il1 6 8 tumor necrosis factor alpha platelet activity factor they are also released and they lead to a, 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 a the activation of the coagulation cascade leading to procoagulant activity and decreased fibrinolysis this decreased fibrinolysis leads to the deposition of the fibrin in the pleural space that leads to the formation of the septa or loculations <clears throat> so the causes of exudative pleural fusion include infective causes which includes pneumonia bronchiectasis pancreatitis tuberculosis and abscesses collagen vascular diseases such as autoimmune diseases such as systemic leukocytic hematosis rheumatoid arthritis etc a new plastic uh, causes such as leukemia and lymphomas, then uremia is there, then some medications such as bromocriptine, amiodarone, and nitrofurantine, etc. Post radiation, a pleurofusion is also exudative and traumatic. Transudative, usually, as we know, that this is because of increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased on cortic pressure, so it can there can be renal causes which nephrotic syndrome cardiac causes such as congestive heart failure hepatic causes when there is hepatic failure that can lead to both the increased hydrostatic pressure and the decreased on cortic pressure then nutritional causes such as protein energy malnutrition if no one is if someone is taking no protein diet the overall protein content in the blood goes down hypothyroidism coming to the first one biogenic which is biogenic that can be because of uh, lung abscesses the sept because of septicemia it can be because of the penetrating chest wall injuries eruption of the esophagus leading to the contamination of the pleural cavity with uh, food contents and the and the uh... so uh, now we are back again to the type of fluid in the pleural space which can be biogenic this can be because of the lung abscess it can be because of the septicemia which has spread to the lung and caused local infection there there can be chest wall penetrating injuries leading to infection uh, in the chest cavity then rupture of the esophagus which will lead to the contamination of the pleural cavity with uh, the contents of the gi contents of the food particles and rupture of the subphrenic abscess which will extend into the pleural cavity and rupture of the liver abscess itself chylus there can be trauma to the thoracic duct leading to local uh, leakage then there are some tumors such as mediastinal lymphoma tuberculosis or lymphatic obstruction leading to backflow and leakage so hemothorax uh, which is blood in the pleural fluid uh, can be because of chest wall injuries again there can be breathing disorders and diagnosis leading to uh, that in the pleural fluid 
there can be new plasmas such as leukemias lymphomas and mesotheliomas and there can be the patient can be on anticoagulants or there can be pulmonary infarct usually when uh, the are number of red blood cells reach around 10000 then actually uh, the pleural fluid starts to have a blood tinge so at that time you feel that yes pleural fluid is up there is somewhat blood in that there however if the rbcs uh, are present are more than 1 lakh per microliter then that fluid is grossly bloody okay so if the cells are around 10000 red blood cells per microliter so you will have a slight tinge of blood in the pleural fluid but when they are there the, the rbc level increases around 100000 then uh, the fluid is grossly pseudokylus as i already told it can be because of the blue, uh, rheumatoid pleuritis tuberculosis or paragominiasis a paragominiasis is a rheumatoid fluke infection it, it, it's actually transmitted by consumption of the raw uncooked crab or crayfish uh, almost 50 species have been identified and most common is the lung fluke which is paragonium uh, westermanni uh, you will most likely go through infection when you are going through the infectious disease lectures then there is hydrothorax when there is fluid only simple fluid in the thoracic cavity that can be because of uh, uh, congestive heart failure hepatic or renal failures these are this will be transudative so the clinical presentation actually depends on the um, underlying cause or the mechanism by which the pleural fluid actually was formed so the clinical presentation in transudative effusions will be different as compared to those in the exudative uh, signs and symptoms inflammation and the of the parietal pleura leads to pain in the local involved area which is the intercostal area and uh, well, remember that whenever the parietal side of the pleura is involved uh, the pain is very much localized severe and uh, uh, sharp this is similar to the pain we have in uh, appendicitis when the visceral peritoneum is involved in the append appendicitis of the patient with appendicitis the patient has a vague uh, pain it is sometimes localized in the umbilical area or in the epigastrium or the patient feels some bit nauseating or something like that but when the parietal peritoneum is involved then the pain is very sharply located to the right atrial fossa and it is very uh, sharp and localized and very severe or the pain in the parietal pleura can be uh, referred to the shoulder for example if the central portion of the diaphragmatic parietal pleura is inflamed or that is irritated pain is actually referred to the ipsilateral shoulder dyspnea because of the fluid accumulation the lung is collapsing the patient feels dyspnea and it is frequent and may be present cough is also a sign inspection and there is absent or diminished movement or movements of the uh, chest wall on the affected side there is fullness of the chest with bulging of the intercostal spaces on palpation there is decreased or absent tactile fremitus percussion is always stony dull and auscultation there is absence of press sounds over the fusion always remember that in pleural fusion the the sounds press sounds will be absent over the area of effusion not above the area of effusion but over the area of effusion and vocal resonance is obviously absent and signs of pneumonia like bronchial breathe which which will be over the area of uh, paranormal effusion or over the area of consolidation uh, this will this will is uh, may be present this is also over the area of the uh, consolidation coming to investigation we have to go for a complete cbc and along with the total and differential ecocyte count acute phase reactants that will uh, that is crp and esr they will be increased pro calcitonin actually differentiates help us differentiate between a bacterial and the viral cause of infection radiological examination we can get uh, x ray Uh, when there is fluid collection of around 75 to 100 ml in the posterior costophrenic angle on the lateral view of the uh, lateral view of the x uh, chest 
or 175 to 200 ml in the lateral costophrenic angle in front view of the x ray chest. So we will be able to uh, become the fusion. Even 100 ml of fluid can be demonstrated radiologically in lateral decubitus view. We will also discuss this view uh, in coming slides. CT chest, however, is able to pick as little as 10 ml of. So findings are obliteration of the cardiophrenic and the cost of phrenic angles as already shown you in the x-ray. There can be localized fusion, there can be subpulmonic fusion. We have already shown you the x-ray of this one. Lateral decubitus on the side of the fusion will show a shift in the fluid level. I will go through this one uh, in the coming slides. There can be tracheal and mediastinal shifts as seen in the massive fusion. So this is the fluid in the left pleural cavity and this is the lateral decubitus view as you can see when the patient lies down on the left side of the chest downwards the fluid under the force of the gravity moves from this point along along the lateral border like this so this is the whole fluid it will help us differentiate between a loculated fear if if there was some fibrotic band or or some uh, some area or um, uh, a septa uh, which was actually holding the fluid here when the patient will lie down in the lateral decubitus view this fluid will not travel upwards so the end the, the fluid will not follow the gravitational pull because of the septa or the fibrosis these are the gross appearances, straw color, this one, and then there is blood stained, purulent, which is pussy, and then chylus, which is totally white. Transudative and exudative effusions, you can see the differences, the protein levels are lower in the transudative effusions and higher in the exudative effusions. And the mechanism is already told to you in the last few in the last slides. pH is around 7.2, more than 7.2 in the transudative effusions, and it is less in the exudative effusion. As already told, that exudative effusions are more acidic as compared to transudative. Similarly, in the glucose levels are more than 40, and here they are less than 40. Uh, LDH is low, less than 200, and there is then this is high in the exudative fluid, and the cell count is less than and one, more than 1000. Life's criteria, as already mentioned in the previous slides, uh, we will go through it. Life's criteria actually helps us differentiate between an exudative and a transudative pleural effusion. So, if the pleural fluid to serum total protein ratio is more than 0.5 it is exudative this means that some protein from the fluid from the serum has leaked into the pleural fluid that's why the protein content in the pleural fluid has increased okay so this ratio simply means that the the usual if the usual pro protein in the pleural fluid divided by serum protein ratio was less than 0.5 and now it is more than 0.5 this means that some protein has leaked from the serum into the pleural fluid thus one mechanism which already we have discussed that when there is exudative when there is exudative inflammation the protein is actually leaking into the pleural space if the pleural fluid to serum ldh ratio is more than 0.6 or the pleural fluid LDH is more than two thirds of the serum LDH. As already told in the previous slides, this is very important. If pleural fluid to serum LDH ratio is increased, this means that the, this is exudative effusion. And none of this, obviously, none of these criteria should be present in the transudative effusion. This we have gone through. Okay. So, bloody pleural fluid can be because of uh, some procedure which we did, such as thoracentesis. Uh, but, however, if, if it is hydrogenic, then the fluid will become more clear as the fluid keeps on coming out. Grossly, bloody pleural fluids are usually because of the presence of malignancy, pulmonary embolism, or because of
hemothorax, the presence of blood uh, in the pleural cavity. And when it is present, we actually have to calculate the pleural fluid to blood hematocrit ratio, which should be more than 0.5. If it is more than 0.5, this means that this is cross hemothorax and we need to do a chest tube drainage. If there is eosinophilia, more than 10% we total nucleated cell count in the pleural fluid. This may suggest air or blood in the pleural space. However, if they are not present, then we have to think of fungal parasitic infections. It can be drug induced or there can be pulmonary embolism, asbestos related disease, or Chuck Stoss syndrome, which is a ANCA associated vasculitis. Lymphocytosis, which is more than 50% of the total nucleated cell count, is suggestive of malignancy or tuberculosis. Mesothelial cells urge against the diagnosis of tuberculosis, and plasma cells suggest the diagnosis of the multiple. The glucose concentration is usually normal in the transudative effusions, and it is the, it was decreased in the exudative effusions as already told before so if it is less than 60 we should think of tuberculosis malignancy rheumatoid arthritis or paranormonic effusion and uh, here comes another indication for tube thoracostomy which is if the in, if in the paranormonic effusion the glucose concentration is less than 60 we should go for tube thoracostomy pleural fluid with a low ph a ph of less than 7.3 is seen when there is empyema there is tuberculosis malignancy, collagen vascular disease, or there is a esophageal rupture. All of these are the causes of exudative pleural effusion and all, as already mentioned, exudative pleural effusion is more acidic than the if the amylase is this plasma, the pleural fluid amylase is increased, then we should think of some pancreatic underlying pancreatic disease such as pancreatitis, pancreatic pseudocyst. We can, we can also think of malignancies such as renal carcinoma of the lung or the pancreas or esophageal. So, if the pleural fluid is turbid or milky, we have to centrifuge it. If the supernatant clears after centrifugation, then this means that the cloudiness was likely because of the cell debris. However, if the supernatant remains turbid, then we have to calculate the pleural fluid lipids, which will be elevated. Uh, this is a uh, diagnostic for chylothorax, and we have already gone through the causes of that. So cytology, uh, which we could do for malignant, uh, to rule out malignancy, the malignant pleural effusions is positive in approximately 60% of the malignant effusions, and the volume of the pleural fluid actually does not impact the yield of the cytological uh, diagnosis. Urinothorax. This is a rare condition due to obstructive uropathy because of nephrolithiasis, strictures, posterior urethral valves, etc. Uh, the urine actually uh, leaks retroperitoneally to the posterior diaphragm and there it's, it, it contaminates the pleural space. It's usually transudative and obviously it will smell like urine. And pleural fluid to serum creatinine ratio here is more than one. Uh, which is sportive and if it is more than 1.7 that is diagnostic for urine orthorex. Other investigation which can we, we can go uh, uh, for in the pleural fluid are adenosine deaminase if we are suspected to tuberculosis, beta 2 microglobulin, lysosome 3 levels, PCR, we can send PCR for two microbacterium tuberculosis or we can do uh, smear which is uh, ASA fast slice smear. Uh, for uh, suspected rheumatoid uh, related pleural effusion uh, which was a pseudopilus uh, effusion we can go for pleural RA factor or we can go for low glucose in the uh, pleural fluid if we are suspecting systemic glucose erythematosis then serum complement levels and uh, ANA can be done uh, pneumonia as I already told you paranormonic effusions are more acidic as compared to uh, non paranormonic effusions and if uh, we are suspecting pancreatitis then pleural fluid amylase. So management is sportive. Uh, if the patient is not able to maintain his O2 sats, we can give extra oxygen to maintain it around 92% uh, of uh, SpO2. Uh, we in paranormonic effusion we can initiate IV antibiotics for that. We have to give analgesics and antipyretics because uh, uh, it's very painful condition, uh, especially if 
if the parietal uh, pleura is inflamed and the fluid overload uh, load states such as the heart failure or renal issues uh, should be treated with diuretics and treatment of the other leg. Surgery, you can do a uh, pleural fluid aspiration, which can be a diagnostic uh, tap or it can be a, a therapeutic tap. Uh, we can do both. Uh, it is done by a wide bone needle. If the fluid is thick and cannot be drained by the needle, and intercostal drainage under water seal can be done at that time. Uh, usually, if the fusion is small, we do not need to do a therapeutic tap, uh, uh, especially if it is transudative. If it's exudative, or the pH is less, or or uh, it's um, uh, uh, biothorax, then we have to drain it, whatever uh, the amount of fluid that there is. Uh, we will go through it. And Synthesis is the procedure we call it, and it's it can be diagnostic. This helps to differentiate between exudative and transudative effusions, and that there is therapy. There are therapeutic. Um, the thoracosynthesis which we can do if there is massive collection or rapid collection of the fluid of fluid which leads to severe respiratory distress, suspected empyma uh, which is biothorax or massive mediastinal shift. So tube thoracostomy uh, is done when there is pneumothorax and uh, uh, that topic will be covered by um, uh, Dr. Hafiz Amdasan. Uh, pleural fluid locate. If the pleural fluid is located, we can do the tube thoracostomy. If uh, it is recurrent or malignancy, or malignancy associated, if the effusion fills more than half of the hemithorax, if there is hydro bio pneumothorax, uh, uh, such as there is air fluid level, if there is pus in the pleural space, as already mentioned, and pima uh, or biothorax, uh, hemothorax, which we already told you that if the uh, pleural fluid hematocrit to uh, serum hematocrit ratio is more than 0.5, then you have to go for tube thoracostomy in uh, case of hemothorax. Uh, similarly, chylothorax. Uh, Paranomonic effusions, if they are positive, stains for microorganisms, uh, positive pleural fluid cultures, the pH falls less than 7.2, the glucose goes less than 60, or the LDH goes more than 1000, then we have to uh, go for paranomonic effusion drainage as well as. So, this is the picture of underwater seal bag, which is used as a one way valve mechanism. The air or the fluid pass from the pleura enters the underwater drainage bag, but the atmospheric air cannot enter pleura due to underwater seal. These pictures show you how to do a tube thoracotomy, and uh, they will be more elaboratively taught in the surgical lectures. Chemical pleural disease. If the pleural fusion is uh, recurrent and uh, or if it is continuously forming and we uh, want to actually uh, stop prevent that from uh, happening then we can do a chemical pleuridesis in which we actually uh, fix the parietal and the visceral pleura uh, so they, the space cannot expand and the fluid cannot get collected there. So chemical uh, pleurodesis is an effective therapy for recurrent fusions. The treatment is recommended in patients whose symptoms are relieved with initial drainage but who have rapid accumulation of fluid. So talc can be used that is uh, effective and inexpensive. Doxycycline and minocycline can also be instilled into the pleural space by the chest tube and uh, they can actually cause inflammation there and adhesion between the parietal and the visible pleura. However, uh, the pain is more prevalent in uh, the group we uh, treated with doxycycline and minocycline. A chronic indwelling pleural catheter can also be used in patients with recurrent pleural effusions, uh, where you have to place the catheter inside and that uh, the, uh, the newly formed pleural effusion actually, actually keeps on leaking into the container.